Honorable Chairman, sir, I also rise to participate in this very important short duration discussion pertaining to the news item. Ap ka jing yap thaan ye kino hikai school SSA bumi uktulop na san bunai kinti. So the very heading itself, as the honourable member from North Mumbai had said, is heart wrenching, very painful to see that the agonies of the SSA teachers have not been addressed in a befitting manner, considering the their duties, their contributions to society, and especially in the responsibility towards building the youths of our state, sir. So the entire genesis of this problem, which keeps aggravating from year to year, is the capping of the salaries by the central government, turning back on its commitment to the state, turning back on its commitment to the people, bringing down its contribution from 18,000 to 15,000 for every SSA teacher. So, there is a constitution that binds us together, that binds the union and the state governments together on a fraternal, on, or a federal, uh, on a federal structure, sir. It is the duty bound that every government at the center and the state should respond to the call of our citizens, should stand by our commitments that we have given to our teachers especially. But then, sir, the inability of the state government to protect our federal rights. I'm saying this again, sir. I said this before. I'm saying this again. This is one instance where the state government has surrendered its federal position by giving up and allow, allow itself to be bullied by the central government policy of suddenly withdrawing its commitment from the 90-10 ratio to a 75-25 ratio. For a small state like us, sir, 3,000 extra to bear for every SSA teacher will definitely burden the state finance. Now, the state finance then has to pep up its activities. Just by turning a deaf ear to several letters written by one, by a department, how does that solve a problem, sir? Can't there be part payments? Can't there be installments? So that at least this problem can be relieved. If letters just shoot off from one table to the other, sending these communications only brings much more frustration to the people who see that nothing is being done and the government amongst themselves from one department to another also, there is no coordination. There is no mutual respect. There is no understanding of the problems on the ground. Sir, so, planning and finance department being parent departments from all the other departments in the state, sir, it is expected that they show a motherly attitude. But then this kind of snubbing the problems of the SSA teachers will not take us anywhere. On one hand, sir, we are seeing this problem. The ground realities are much more painful, as I had said. Our SSA, SSA teachers are borrowing right, left and centre, borrowing to buy their meals, borrowing to pay for their children's school fees, borrowing to pay for their house rent, borrowing to pay for their electricity bills, borrowing to meet even sometimes for their travel allowances to go to their schools. Just to fulfill that commitment and responsibilities, most of the SSA teachers now have to even borrow money to go to their own schools. Sir, so, even if this salary is released immediately also, just paying their dues maybe will be not enough because the living cost is so, so high now. So, therefore, what 
we have cautioned the government from time to time, we have alerted the government from time to time, is the leakage of resources. On one hand, we are seeing the government allowing the resources to be leaked. On the other hand, the government which utilizes these resources to meet its commitments of payment of salaries, especially to our teachers and other commitments as well, the government does not seem to be bothered, sir. We have numerously highlighted the fact that there is loss of revenue through illegal transportation, through overloading, through illegal check gates, through extortion. But then nobody seems to listen. So, until and unless we work out a transparent and accountable system, a clean system that will allow the state to gather all its resources and ensure that these resources, these precious resources of the state, the money of our people is guarded properly and ensure that these resources are channelized where it is much more needed, especially in the education sector, sir, where we need so much of support. Yesterday, sir, a very fanciful budget was presented. The government has divided the, uh, the budget into three uh, kind of sectors, sustainable development goals budget, youth budget, gender budget. Fanciful name, sir. But then whether we will stand by these commitments, whether the sustainability of our, of our development will be ensured, whether our gender equality will be protected, whether our youths will be protected, sir. Therefore, sir, in yesterday's budget, nothing seems to, we will discuss this at length, but then nothing seems to be cautioning the government of ensuring that the government comes up with a different policy to address the, the education sector, sir, except for the infrastructure, that also because of the money that is coming from the center, not from the state resources. So, sir, we need to address this issue effectively and ensure that the teachers, they are given their dues and from the department even we are, do, we are seeing that they are trying to give one month, two months, but then sir, this hardly meets even a portion of their liabilities. So with this few very concerns, I thank you for the time given and resume my seat, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. I would also like to uh, participate in this very important discussion, the short duration discussion raised by the Honorable Member from Osunram, pertaining to the issue of the SSC teachers. Sir, the teachers are the backbone of the nation. They are called as gurus. And it's the teachers who produce people to serve the nation. So at this juncture, in our state of Meghalaya, what we could see, the teachers are not getting proper attention from, by the, from the government, especially the SSA teacher which on which we are discussing, they have not been getting salary since the month of October. That means five years with this month, it will be six years. They are six, six months. And also, their salary was enhanced in the year 2017. Since then, uh, it has been confined in that amount only. And also the areas that they were entitled to get, they have not given with that areas also. Therefore, sir, we can see in the preceding several months, the SSC teachers are hitting the street, showcasing their grievances before us, before the leaders, before the government, 
But on the other hand, the government has been giving its deaf ear. In spite of being reminded several times through several letters being issued to the finance department, I don't know what is happening. No concrete decision has been made to address the issue of the SSC teachers. Yesterday, when I was listening to the reply of the Honorable Chief Minister on the debate on this governor's address, he was referring to the issue of the SSD teachers. And rather than having keen interest to address this very important issue, he was just referring that during past government also, SSC teachers were not getting salaries for four to five months at a stretch. So that is the reflection of their lack of commitment level. So Mr. Speaker, sir, I don't want to dwell at length, but what I mean to say, several SSC teachers, even in my constituency and adjoining areas, I could see they are not being able to pay their school, the school fees of their children. And the school authority, they are not allowing the children to continue their studies also in some schools. This is the state of affairs. And for their daily needs, some of the teachers, they are keep on buying essential commodities on credit and ultimately in some places the shop owners they are refusing to give commodities on credit. That is the situation that our teachers, SSC teachers are facing. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, sir, this issue has to be addressed without any delay. And I earnestly request the government of the day to sincerely address this issue and make an effort to release the salary of these teachers and also the areas at the earliest. With these few words, thanking you for giving me this opportunity, I resume message.